SpaceX is going to begin cleaning up the skies by gobbling up space junk using starships. On July 3, 2021, a Twitter user asked Elon if he had any ideas on how he might keep space clean enough so that orbital businesses in the future won't run into any major problems. He replied with, Yes, we can fly Starship around space and chomp up debris with the moving fairing door. The idea is quite straightforward conceptually, but in practice, it's extremely difficult. Starships have something called a fairing door, which can open up once the aircraft reaches orbit. Starship can then deploy spacecraft and the fairing door will close itself before Starship returns to Earth. So, for the purpose of clearing space debris, those same doors would open up to allow space junk to be stored in the cargo hold, where it can be brought back down to the surface. Another option might be to move the piece of debris to a lower orbit, where it will decay naturally. At the moment, it's thought these Pac-Man starships will be going after big pieces of litter, dead satellites, and even spare rocket parts. The smaller pieces of space debris might not be financially worth the effort of an entire mission using Starship. It's also much harder to track smaller pieces of debris, so targeting them for chomping would be even harder. Well, that is until there's a cheap method of vacuuming hundreds of small pieces of debris through the fairing door. The question is, how do you vacuum the vacuum of space? We'll leave that for another video. It all sounds a bit crazy, but this isn't the first time this idea has been talked about. Back in October 2020, the president of SpaceX, Gwen Shotwell, also said that Starship could one day navigate Earth's orbit collecting space debris, where it could then store it in the cargo bay. It's not going to be easy, but I do believe that Starship offers the possibility of going and doing that. Right now, it's estimated that there are over 750,000 objects larger than one centimeter orbiting Earth. And let's be honest, we've only just begun the era of commercial spaceflight. If we discount the tiny ones, then we get 29,000 pieces of debris that are bigger than 10 centimeters, and those are more likely to be the target of any salvaging missions. That 29,000 number is only going to get bigger over time if we do nothing about it. And as more and more objects end up blazing around the Earth at incomprehensible speeds, the more chance there is of serious accidents. A collision between two large objects that are traveling tens of thousands of miles per hour will blow each other into smithereens, and it'll create thousands of new pieces of debris exploding in all directions. And then those those objects can collide with other objects, which create even more pieces of debris. Then, you're left with a shell of space debris around the Earth that not only makes space flights that much more challenging, but will also be extremely damaging for astronomers who want a clear view of the night sky. The worst case scenario is something called the Kessler Syndrome. This is a term coined by NASA scientist Donald Kessler in 1978. His idea was that if there were enough debris in orbit that could cause one collision to cause another collision, then it could cause a cascading chain of debris colliding into one another. It could render orbital missions and space travel too dangerous for multiple generations. The chances of this happening are very low at the moment, but it's still something that companies like SpaceX will be thinking about. SpaceX has already come under fire by astronomers and critics who are concerned that their satellites are too bright. They reflect sunlight back down to Earth, which causes them to be very bright at dusk and dawn. This is coincidentally the same time that astronomers look for black holes, near-Earth objects like asteroids and comets, and even new planets. SpaceX has tried to fix this by coding the satellites in black and removing reflective materials from the parts of the satellites that face Earth, but even with these improvements, they still block the night sky. To actually stop the satellites from obstructing the view of astronomers, you'd need some kind of hyper-advanced cloaking technology straight out of Star Trek. This gives us less room to leave useless junk floating around in orbit, which is why SpaceX is beginning to really think about cleaning everything up. But it's not just that it annoys astronomers. Rogue space junk can pose a real threat to human life. On a recent SpaceX Dragon flight, a piece of space debris came within 28 miles of the capsule which actually had crew members aboard. The crew were told to put their suits back on, cover the windows with Kevlar blankets, and to get strapped into their seats just in case of rapid air pressure loss. It fortunately turned out to be a false alarm as there was apparently no risk the debris would collide with the capsule. But even so, the threat is very real. Even more recently, the International Space Station was hit in June 2021. A robotic arm was hit by a small piece of debris that was clearly traveling very fast because it went straight into the arm and out the other side like it was nothing. The ISS crew didn't even notice it happened until a routine inspection of the station was carried out. The robotic arm still works just fine though, which is quite strange considering it now has a hole going all the way through it. Currently, the ISS and the Chinese space station are the only space stations manned with crew members, but in the future, it's going to increase. If nothing is done, orbital debris could one day pose a real threat to the astronauts who live in orbit, so it's good that SpaceX and others are already thinking of how to solve the problem. The ISS isn't completely defenseless though. There's ongoing research 
research into materials and shielding configurations that could actually protect against space debris traveling at orbital speeds. There are also ways in which the crew can protect itself if a debris collision does occur. But this technology hopefully won't be needed all the time if humanity can be a little bit cleaner with its space adventures. There are some big hurdles to overcome before Starship can actually begin capturing debris though. Unfortunately, some of these are going to involve political and legal problems. For example, China is banned from entering the ISS. If progress was the main priority, then they wouldn't be banned at all, which proves there's always a political element to these things. As we know, SpaceX isn't a big fan of disposable rockets, and so if they were to begin cleaning up space debris soon, they'd likely be picking up things that were put up there by other companies and even other countries. Would Russia or China really allow Elon Musk to chomp up some of their dead satellites or rocket parts and take them back to Earth without saying anything? Or imagine if Jeff Bezos's company, Blue Origin, actually makes it to orbit one day. Will Jeff be okay with Starship coming along and taking some of its failed rocket tests back to Starbase? Probably not. It's going to be a bit similar to how shipwrecks are handled. Maybe after a certain period of time, a piece of space debris will no longer be owned by the people who put it there. This would allow SpaceX or even other companies and countries to go and take it for themselves. Maybe one day SpaceX will sell its starships to private salvaging companies so they can go up into orbit and poke around for some valuable debris. Who knows, it could be a whole new industry, space debris salvaging. There are lots of reasons why someone might want their orbital debris brought back down to Earth. Many of the things zooming around the planet have immense historical value and could be placed in museums, or they could be sold to private individuals and collectors. One example might be the Hubble Space Telescope. Of course, this stuff would run into the political and legal problems we mentioned earlier. It's possible as well that a Starlink satellite deployed into space develops a slight problem. If it were cheap enough, maybe SpaceX would want to chomp it up, bring it back to Earth, repair it, and redeploy it again. It's pretty unlikely though because you never know what condition the broken satellite was really in. In that case, it could be brought back like any other piece of debris. Not to mention that SpaceX would massively benefit from the PR that cleaning up space would bring. After all, if we're gonna have Starship flights every day some point in the future, then clear sky are going to make it much easier. But it does seem like it could become SpaceX's responsibility, as it's the private company that's doing the most work. SpaceX hopes to put 42,000 Starlink satellites in orbit by the year 2027. If they achieve this, they'll be by far the industry leaders in low Earth orbit. It seems like they're already aware of the problems this might cause because they've already lowered the entire constellation's orbit. By doing this, they've made it so the satellites will decay much faster. It also reduces the distance between the satellites and your PC, so it'll probably reduce lag a bit. So it seems like a win-win. It does sound extremely expensive to launch a starship simply to bring back a few pieces of debris though. If we get really futuristic, we can see the potential for something magnificent. If SpaceX or another company or even a country was to take the space debris problem seriously, maybe they'd build a recycling space station. This way you could have multiple starships orbiting the Earth and collecting pieces of debris, and once they've completed their task, they could dock at the recycling station. From there, the debris from multiple starships could be loaded into another starship. This starship would be the one that returns to Earth with the debris. By doing it like this, there are way fewer missions needed to go from Earth to orbit, which would be much cheaper. What do you think the future of space debris salvaging looks like? Let us know in the comments down below. We hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and be sure to turn on the notification bell. We've got so many more interesting videos in the pipeline. As always, thanks for watching and until next time, welcome to the future.